Okay, so we're going to read the end of those shoes today. Now, as you recall, when we ended yesterday, Grandma and Jeremy were sitting at the table, and Grandma had made the comment about going to look for those shoes, that she had some money saved, and maybe it would be enough to get the shoes that Jeremy wanted. At the shoe store, Grandma turned those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Hmm, let me reread that. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. So this is fitting with what we were thinking at the very beginning of the story, when Grandma said that there wasn't enough money, there was no room for wanting things. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Grandma shakes her head. Then I remember the thrift shops. So if you don't know, a thrift shop is a store that sells slightly or gently used items, but at a huge discount. So you're not gonna pay what you're gonna pay, you know, in like a department store like Macy's or something like that, you'll pay less for it. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one of them away? We ride the bus to the first thrift shop. After, sorry, black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoes except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop. I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes. High tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take off my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I think they fit. Grandma kneels down on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, she says, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pulled the other shoe on and tried to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes won't fall off right then and there. But my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money, and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. Oh, I feel so bad for Jeremy. These shoes don't fit, but he buys them anyway. I'm realizing how desperate Jeremy is. Remember her desperate being one of our vocabulary words? I want you to jot in your journal about Jeremy. Make sure you use the word desperate as you do your jotting today. So in your journal, you can write right underneath where you were writing yesterday. Write Jeremy and then put a dash. And just jot down a little bit about Jeremy, what we know about him. And remember to make sure you use the word desperate. home a few days later grandma puts on a new puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my two big feet shuffling around in my two small shoes sometimes shoes stretch i say
Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. I have to wear my Mr. Alfrey shoes to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up, and his feet look smaller than mine. Okay, so let's stop for a second. Let's connect some of the parts of this story and see how they fit together with Antonio. Okay. So I'll start us off with the before. Think, what was happening before? You know, Antonio was the only one who didn't laugh at Jeremy when he came back with his Mr. Alfrey shoes. And now, what are we noticing about Antonio? Talk with your learning coach for just a second. What are you noticing now about Antonio? You know, we're noticing that his shoes have tape on them. Jeremy notices that his feet are a little bit smaller. So what are you thinking or wondering right now? Go ahead and pause the video, get out your reading journal, and underneath where you wrote about Jeremy, you're going to write, I am wondering. And then go on to write, what are you wondering? What do you think Jeremy's thinking right now? What do you think might happen? Go ahead and pause the video. Jot down your wonderings right now. And then go ahead and play the video when you are finished. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio is there. The only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think, <laughs> excuse me, I think I am not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I am not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what? Antonio says, breathing hard. So I want to show you something that I noticed here. The author is repeating the words, I am not going to do it. These are thoughts in Jeremy's head. And then he eventually says it out loud. So we know it's something that Jeremy is really thinking about because he says it over and over and over. But the author doesn't tell us what it is. It's up to us to figure out what it really is. So let's put this all together. Antonio didn't laugh. The shoes that Jeremy bought are too small. Antonio's shoes are falling apart. They've got tape on them. His shoes look smaller than Jeremy's shoes. I think I might know what it is right now. Do you know what it is? Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them? Antonio asks. I shrug. My hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. 
that night I am awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I try on my shoes one last time. Those are some pretty powerful words that tell us a lot of information. One last time. He doesn't try on the shoes. He tries them on one last time. Reading those words, it makes me smile because I have a prediction in my head of what might happen. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes. But later, when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere, there is snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, the teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall? It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots. New black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. So before we read this book, I told you some people will read this book and think it's just about a boy who wants some shoes. But remember I told you we would read it and realize it was about so much more? So let's all think with our pencils in our hands. What was this book really about? Okay, so in your reading journal, underneath some of the jottings that we've done, if you still have room on that page, I want you to answer the following. We have Jeremy wants, and you're going to write what Jeremy wants. Jeremy thinks, and you're going to write what Jeremy thinks. And then you're going to do Jeremy gets. And then you're going to write down what Jeremy gets from this story, from this book. Okay. And then after that, I want you to write a sentence telling me what you think this story was really about. Okay. So look back through your notes. Think back through the story. What does Jeremy want? What does Jeremy think? What does Jeremy get? And then write me a sentence about what you think this story is really about.